Okay. Um, as we were saying, mm. last week we did not read the Haftarah for Bamidbar. Yeah. We read the Haftarah Machar Chodesh. Vivian, do you hear us? Mm. Vivian? Yeah, yes. Do you hear us? Yes, I do. Okay, because we hear you. So I don't know if you want to go on mute. Oh, so if you want okay. To, it's okay if you stay unmuted, just not to say anything. Okay. Um, thank you. So we learned Machar Chodesh because Rosh Chodesh Sivan was Saturday night, Sunday, just this past week. And there's a special Haftarah when the next day is Rosh Chodesh, which we talked about in detail last week. But we skipped learning the Haftarah for Bamidbar. And I really, I think there's something special about it. And it's an opportunity to, to learn it, even if we didn't read it on Shabbat. That's what we're going to learn today. And I'm very, very excited about it. One of the things that we do when we learn together is to look at the connection between the Haftarah and the parasha. And I think in some ways it's, a, it's maybe a little bit obvious because there's a direct textual connection, but it's not so obvious to me. And I wanted to, I wanted, the, oh, there comes Judith. You do have a face. There you go. <laughs> Great that you figured it out. I wanted to discuss with this class what we might think could be the connection between the parasha and haftarah. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the parashat Bamidbar. So remember, what is the book of Bamidbar called in English? Numbers. Numbers. Correct. Oh, it's, called, nahon, it's called Numbers. Why? The census. Census. There's counting. There's so much of that. It happens at least once and more than once. And it happens right at the beginning. And it and just putting it on your radar that and people have discussed this with me that at the beginning, the men who were between ages 20 and 60 were counted. Do you remember why those men were counted those ages? You go to the army. You go to the fight. Military you go to the army, army. Very good. Yeah, correct. Correct. That's all military army. Perfect. But who was not counted other than the women? Obviously, that's Le Levites. 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 Yes. Thank you, Milton. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. Yeah. I so, um, yeah, Stuart, you're not on view, so you don't see when people raise their hand. So Milton also raised his hand. He was going to say also Shevet Levi. It's okay. It's okay, Stuart. We love having you. It's great. I'm just point. I'm just telling you that. So you don't see, but he was also saying Levi. And Levi, actually, interestingly, were interestingly, were also called an army, but a different kind of army, the army of God. And they were also counted from a different age. Anybody remember what age they're counted from? Uh, up till 50. From from what age? I think 30. Keep trying. <laughs> Lower. Uh, 20. I think from age 20. Lower, 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 lower. Five. Five. What, Helen? Five. Lower. Third. Oh. Yeah. There's no age. Faye, we see you doing so. No, there's an age, but that was a good guess. Uh, the the tribe of Levi were counted from one month, which mm. is really interesting because obviously they're not really serving God at age one month. But what what's the parallel? Where does a Levi come in at age one month? Mm. Where does a Levi where does a Levi shine at age one month? Levi, is it a Levi? Well, not Levi, Shevet Levi. Not a Levi, actually, a Kohen. Mm. Kohen, one month, anybody that's ringing any bells? Maybe one month is the viability of the infant. Okay, that's a nice, oh, that's actually a really nice idea. Thank you, Judy, good idea. I'm just, yes, Helen. Uh, isn't that when there's the uh, redemption of the firstborn? Yes, the rede yes, Sue, is that what you were going to say, Pijana Ben? The pijana bed. I just find that so interesting. So maybe it's like Judy said that it's the it's when they're viable. Although again, they're not. It's just an interesting idea, that, and maybe it's at one month that they kind of replace. Remember, the firstborns were the ones who were supposed to serve God. Does anybody remember that? The yes, firstborns yes. were the ones. Why? Yes, Stuart. And why did not they? What happened? The uh, ego. The Egel, exactly, because the men, remember that, not the women, yeah. just saying, 
The women were not involved. I always like add that in in case people forgot. <laughs> the women were not involved. They didn't take off their jewelry. I don't have jewelry on right now, but they did not take off their gold. They did not contribute to making the golden calf. Just saying, if you ever have a reason to mention it, you can just slip that in the same way I just said. Oh, speaking of women, they had nothing to do with the golden calf. You know, that kind of really connectedness. Anyway, the, the firstborns of all the Shvatim, all the tribes, just like all the other men, were all involved in the Chet HaEgel, the sin of the golden calf. And therefore, God said, instead of you serving me in my temple or in my tabernacle, I'm replacing you with the tribe of Levi. And the Kohanim and the Levim then were replaced. And there, I'm going to come back to this because there's a very interesting connection through that. That's why I'm telling you this. Okay, so that's more or less, I'm just trying to say, see what else there is in Parashat Bamidbar. Okay, it's a little bit about what the Levim do. So the Levim are definitely a big part of it, but that's more or less what's happening in Parashat Bamidbar. Okay, now we are going to the Haftarah, the Haftarah. Remember, we did not read it last week. But I'm assuming probably next year we will, yeah, we will be reading it next year because I know when Rosh Chodesh Sunday comes out and it is not for Sivan. It will be for Adar, for Purim. So it will be, Sivan, Rosh Chodesh Sivan will be Thursday or Friday or something. First of all, the, the, the prophecy, which is what we're going to be reading, is from Hosea. Who knows anything about Hosea? We may have met. I believe we already. Have. I, I, say, I, I don't know about Hosea. Was married to a to a ha- harlot. Oh wait, 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 no, wait on that. You're jumping the gun. He wasn't married. God told him to be married, but I'm going to go over that actually. But what do we know about him as a navi? Yes, Sue, unmute, please. Unmute, unmute. Woo. Wait for me. Wait, wait. Nope. Talking to Sue Rudnick. So I'm not, was, no, I'm wait, Stuart, Stuart, wait, please. I, I, I thought you were talking to me. I know, I know. I'm talking to Sue. He yes, married, Sue. He was told to marry a harlot. Right, so that's what Stuart said. So I want to wait on that a minute. Oh. We're going to read that inside. No, you're right, and that's what we remember, but there's a lot more to remember about him. First of all, does he have his own book? No, no, he did not. I want he's to tell not. you. There's a really, really funny skit in Israel. It is in Hebrew. It's from the Hayyudim Ba'im. The Jews are coming. It's a very funny, irreverent comedy uh, group. And basically what they make fun of more than anything else are things from the Bible, things from the Torah. There are just some very, very funny skits. And one of the skits is, I think it's, I think it's Hosea, maybe somebody with, I think it might be one of them from the Minor Prophets, the... Treyasar, the 12 of them. Treyasar, yeah. Treyasar, right. They were grouped together. Why were they grouped together? Because each one had between, I don't know, what was the minimum? Three, maybe? Uh, two, I can't remember. And 12, something like that. So they were grouped together. They're not really minor, by the way. That's the most important thing. Anyway, one of them is sitting in the marketplace at the time of Isaiah, Yeshaya. And we know that Isaiah had many, many chapters, right? 60 chapters, I believe. So he's Mm. talking to this guy, this prophet, I don't remember which one, is talking to Habakkuk or one of those, talking to his friend. He said, I got it. It came in the mail today. And he opens up the Tanakh as if he just, you realize this didn't really happen, right? But it's as if he's in the marketplace, the editor, the guy who put the whole Tanakh together, sends in the book. He's like, yes, I'm looking, I'm looking. I sent him all my prophecies. And he opens the book and he opens the book and he's like, Oh, he only yeah. put three of them in. I don't know what happened. I sent him 50 and I only put three in. And then he closes the book and Isaiah wanders along and says, because he also got the book the same day. I hope people know this is a comedy. I don't see any smiles yet. So I'm not doing a good job representing it. And Isaiah says to him, so, Hoshea, did you get the book, the Tanakh? And how many chapters did you get? And he's like, I got a few chapters. And Isaiah's laughing at him because Isaiah got 60. So... This, it, this sketch is very irreverent, but very funny. And I always think of it whenever I think of the minor prophets that I don't really know if they really had more times that God spoke to them and it never made it into the book. And you wonder why did people like Yirmiyahu and Yeshayahu and Yechazkel, they were actually featured more prominently when actually, I just want to say what I read here, the Talmud teaches that Hosea, how do you pronounce that in English? Hosea, Hosea. 
Hosea. Hosea, otherwise known as Hosea, was a greater prophet than his contemporaries, Yeshayahu, Isaiah, Amos, and Micah, Micha. And those are ones we know more. So isn't that interesting? And therefore, what do we learn from this? It is quality and not quantity. And we always mm -hmm. need to remember that. Just because somebody speaks a lot, I know I'm speaking a lot, but just because somebody speaks a lot, that does not mean that they have more to say to you or more for you to take away. Okay. Bamidbar, I, sorry, um, Treyasak. So, Hoshea, what else can I tell you about him? Um, okay, during the period of Hoshea's prophecy, idolatry was rampant. It was rampant mm -hmm. because Ahav and, and Jezebel, Isabel, I guess that's in Hebrew. Yeah. The first temple yeah, was yeah. standing. They had really supported idolatry. I, I, I always find that odd. Idolatry is so yelled at us by the, the prophets, but I, I'm not pulled to idolatry. So it's really hard for me to understand it. I don't know if anybody here has an explanation as to why idolatry was so enticing to the Jewish people. Is that, can anybody think of a way to frame yeah, it? Yeah, it's concrete. It's it's a lot easier to have something you can see and you can, than just than the more mm -hmm. a nuanced aspect of, of a God that's present, but you can't see. So Judith, that it's actually wonderful. makes a lot of sense. One second, Sue. That makes a lot of sense, but did they really believe that this idol that they physically made with their own hands could have that's the part I guess that's I don't I can't compute that somewhere how do people believe that Elvis is still God? alive and pay a lot of money for things that you know it, I think people even <laughs> have, it, it still exists now that kind of thing only in different contexts wow thank you I'm so glad I asked this question I never heard that those thoughts thank you Sue did you want to add to that no I think this no. is great yeah, that was great, that was Judith. Great. Very People worship. I think I could like totally get off the class now because you left us with words of wisdom. No, just kidding. Because we're not staying with idolatry. We're going back to God. But thank you. That actually was really helpful. I mean, it still doesn't pull me, but I understand that for people, it gave them physically a place. I know that, you know, I guess offering a gift feels like, okay, I did it maybe. And then there's something here. Okay. I still don't 100% get it because I'm not pulled, but I understand what you're saying, Robert. Mm -hmm. Another simple something. reason. Wait, wait, Judith. Sure. Um, Judy, sorry, Robert raised his hand. Yeah. You, you've created. Wait, 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 wait. Stuart, one second. You have to wait. Somebody is speaking. Yes, Robert. Idolatry is something you've created, but you think you can control it, like you can uh, manage the forces of nature, and uh, you'll be in control of it. Be able wow. to influence, at least. Wow. Rather than being subject to things to have, have to pay, you know, you don't have to follow rules. <laughs> Amazing. So, you, no, you that's rules, really rules. helpful. Thank you. That also makes sense. In other words, it might not even make sense logically, but it appeals to something within us. One second, Stuart. Judy wanted to say something first. Yes, Judy. It was what was done in the uh, most of the people in that time worshipped idols. So it was a matter of that was what you do. So I agree, and actually, I know that, but that I always said those words, but it still didn't have more basis to it. But I'm thinking of what Judah, one second, Sue, I'm thinking of what Judah said. There are lots of things that we kind of worship today, and we do it because other people worship it, or often, not always. So that actually, this is great. I, I, this discussion is fantastic for me. However much we get to enough Torah, I'm loving the discussion. Yes, Sue. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, Stuart, Sue, and then Stuart. I thought yeah. you said Sue, Sue, okay, Sue. Oh, you thought I said Stu. <laughs> Sue, Stu, okay, Susan. I'm going to say Susan. Yes, Susan. Okay, people worship money. People worship, and people are beholden to people who have money. Yeah. And this is like they are bowing down to some, in some degree, to people who are wealthy, they worship them. They, oh, yep, yeah, yeah. It's, go on, go on. Right. Go on. Uh, you could look at politically or yep. just um, people who have influence. They are people worship. worship. Yep, you're right. And that's what the semi. So it reminds me of the line from Fiddler on the Roof where he says that if he was a rich man, 
He said that people will come to ask him questions and it won't make one bit of difference if I answer right or wrong. When you're rich, <laughs> they think you really no. 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 Very good. Oh, fantastic. Stuart, what do you have to add? Yes. Okay. Yes. He was married to a, uh, uh, a week, uh, Ahab, Ahab was married to a, 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 a very weak man, 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 man uh, uh, controlled by his wife Jezebel, played by De Betty Davis, who won a Academy Award for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Davis, Thank you. Yes, 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 what's it called? Oh, Wait, what's it called? Jezebel. And Frank yeah, 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 yeah. Jezebel, and that's where we right? get, and that's, sorry, that's where we get Jezebel is somebody who re leads Betty you with Davis screen, was, right? was a great actress. He well, what Jezebel. what movie was that, Stuart? What Jezebel. Movie? Jezebel. Uh, oh, that's Jezebel. the name of the movie. Okay, all right, maybe I'll watch it. Okay, thank you, everybody. This is fantastic. It's a great, great, <laughs> but great. Jezebel movie. Was, was controlled him. Just, but, yeah, but Jezebel controlled him. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Okay, great. No, no, very helpful. Okay, that was. This is all a wonderful, wonderful background. I want to actually go to the haftarah. <sighs> Thank you, everybody, for participating and offering such wise insights. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, Hosea, 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 I'm just gonna call him Hosea. We read from chapter two. But the background are what two people started telling us, and I'm going to go through it. I know some of you know it. My daughter's name is Ruhana, and the first time, she was named after my great aunt Mima. Mima means aunt. Mima Rochma, who was not blessed to have children, but was an amazing person. And I, it was hard for me to converse with her because she spoke in Yiddish, but I did it through my grandmother who interpreted for us. And she did not, was not blessed with children, but was just a very special person and in a way a feminist in her own right because she um, when her husband passed away she took over his business and this was many years ago in B'nai Brak. and she had a lot of chen, grace charm and my daughter really has that as well so wh when i the first time i heard this chapter and i saw that he called his daughter lo ruchama not ruchama i just never forgot it so the word of god came to hoshea and it says when king Uziah, it, it puts him in the right place and this is when there were two there were two kingdoms the kingdom of judah the kingdom of israel god spoke to Hashem and said go get yourself a zona a prostitute for the land and why is he doing this not everybody agrees by the way that this really happened meaning it's not clear if if hoshea actually went and married somebody like that or that this whole story is allegorical and it is describing god's connection to the Jewish people. So it doesn't matter and we do not need to debate that. It works either way. <laughs> so he did that again, according to one interpretation, and married Gomer, daughter of Div Laim. She conceived and bore him a son. The son's name was Yisrael. Yisrael, that God will sow God's seeds, put an end to the monarchy of Israel. This is what happened. Remember the 10 tribes were in Israel and the other Judah was in and Levi was separate, Cohen Levi was separate. And what actually happens in the time of Hosea is that the 10 tribes in the kingdom of Israel were dispersed and lost. In that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Israel. So that's what he's called, the boy Israel. She conceived again, bore a daughter, and was told to be named Lo Ruchama. You are not merciful. But again, I will no longer accept the house of Israel or pardon them. I just want to remind people, that's why people say there's a debate, did it really happen or not? Because every time there's a name, God <coughs> explains that this is actually representative of God and Israel's connection. So that's, that's why it's not clear that it is. And it, again, it doesn't matter for the purposes of what we're doing right now, whether it happened or not. And continuing, conceived again, bore, no, sorry, next one. Ah, but then it continues, the house of Judah, I will accept, I will give them victory, even though the house of Judah also strayed. But for whatever reason, I guess they were a little bit better, or God just had to save some of the people. After weaning Lo Ruchama, she conceived and bore a son who was named Lo Ami. 
not my nation. So again, you can see how this is what God is saying. This is the background to chapter two, which is what we would have read last week in Bamitzvah. And the number of people of Israel should be like the sands of the sea, which cannot be measured or counted. Instead of being told you are not my people, they shall be called children of the living God. So before we even say that, before we even continue, what, just somebody want to say something about this dramatic switch from chapter one to the beginning of chapter two? Any thoughts or just we're accepting it as a switch? One yes, little Ruby. Little. Wait, wait, yeah. one second. Ruby then. Like yeah. from chapter one, that the people of Israel were over. So now, is there a new beginning? Is this well, the kingdom of Israel, right? The kingdom of, the kingdom of Israel is over. So now maybe there's a new beginning. So let's start. Is that comforting? Yes. Oh, no. Great. Great. One second, Stu Stuart, Faye, and then Vivian. I think it's, just, it's switching from doom and gloom to a positive attitude that despite everything, we're still God's children. It's going to so continue no matter what. So I just want to switch your allegory. Yes. So We're angry angry. father. And no, no, so I want to switch that. One second, I want to shift it, Bay, because okay. the allegory here is that we are married to God. Mm -hmm. Even though I know B'nai Israel and that God, Abinu, Malakainu, our father, in this case, God is actually comparing God's self to being a lover, a betrothed of Israel. So I want you to shift that a little bit in your mind and maybe repeat your words that way. Now try to frame it in the in that context. Oh, gee. I um, know. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to think if you want. <laughs> I need a minute. I need a minute to think to reframe it. I'm gonna give you that minute. So um and please feel free to raise your hand, Vivian, but unmute Vivian, you're muted. Uh I think they want to differentiate between the kingdom of of is of Israel and the kingdom of Yehuda, they have different futures. So there are two different prof prophecies. One applies to one, the other, the other applies to the other. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's very, very interesting. Okay, let's keep that in mind as we go forth. Stuart, did you want to add? Yes, I think that you are, it's always, it's always been too hard. He expected more from the people of Israel, and he, he was too hard on them. All, all the hot towers, he, he always, yeah. he always blessed them and he said, oh, bro, 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 I'll save you in the end. Like, yeah. uh, if it was really, if, it was, if you really had a father like that, it would, it would be very hard to, to be, I had a good father, a real good father. Yeah, yeah. I know you told us, Stuart, last time you were very clear. I, about I, I think he's too hard on me. He's too hard on me. Yeah, I think he's got too it. Hard. Yeah, yeah. Thank I, you. So I you why? Because yeah. Elijah the prophet. Can I ask a question? No, wait, Stuart, one second. Stuart, you're repeating something you've told us, and I appreciate it, but we don't need to repeat it. We heard it, and it's... But Elijah very... the prophet uh, uh, stopped uh, Jezebel and those, those people. He, okay. he killed all the prophets, and he did it. He, they, so God did, did answer him. And, I, okay. and I'll tell you something. At the end of, at the end of every job, is, I do Elio Hanavi, Elio Hanavi, Elio Hanavi. He's the guy that's going to come back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. One second. Somebody wanted to ask a question. Was that you, Ruby? Can I ask a question? So, so no. Judy, you have to wait because Ruby raised her sure. hand. Oh, you sure. You asked a question. I just said that marriage implies uh, children and therefore continuity. You said what the point of marriage. So I wonder, <laughs> I, I want to continue that thought, actually, Ruby. Thank you. Because maybe that's actually, I hadn't thought of that. But maybe God is saying we had children and continuity together. So even if one of us strayed, not God, but the Jewish people, I want to build a future with you. That's a real, you know what? You are the only commentary so far to say that. None of the other commentary said that. Thank you. I love that. Write it that down. Of, <laughs> I am going to, see, that's the thing. I feel bad taking time, but there's such beautiful thoughts. I actually said to myself, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch this again so I can take notes. So I think I'm going to watch our class again because <laughs> it's recorded because I need to take notes on these beautiful, beautiful ideas so that I can use them as well. And you may find it in my Dvar Torah. So you should you should read the Dvar Torah that come out on Thursday because I often quote our class on Thursdays. So watch, that may happen, especially what we said about idolatry. That was what you said, actually. Judy, your question. Thank you, Ruby. It was really- Yeah, nice. question. Why are we called B'nai Yisrael? Shouldn't we be called B'nai Hashem? 
Mm. Who were physically the children of Jacob because Abraham. Yes, I know the lineage, right. But, but in terms of. But Judy, everybody is B'nai Hashem. So are the non Jews. So But I'm aren't not, we the Am Segula, the chosen? Wait, wait, but if you say the yeah, children yeah, yeah. of Hashem, also non Jews are children of Hashem. So that's not really the right way. Okay, to say so it. it's making it more particular. I think so. Also, because if we said B'nai Abraham, well, we know Abraham had Yishmael. If we said B'nai Yitzchak, Yitzchak had Esav. But if we say B'nai Israel, everybody, right? That's the whole thing about Yaakov and why is Yaakov symbolized by a home, a house? Because all of his homes stayed within the, the, the um, chosen, the, here's the word, the breed, the covenant. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, Stuart, did you want to add something short? Because I really want to get back to the Torah. Yeah, because, you know, yeah, because I, I want one of the person who says, oh, you're one of the chosen, huh? They're, they're jealous of us. We weren't chosen for that reason. We chose to help the other people. That's it. You know, we were chosen to help other, other, other nations. I agree. Chosen. I agree. Okay. Got a lot. Got a lot. Yep, I agree with you. Okay, going back to the Haftarah. The people of Judah and the people of Israel shall assemble together. So this is interesting, going back to what Vivian mm -hmm. said. It didn't happen, but maybe this is a future. So it's an interesting idea that it was specifically for the people of Judah, but actually God is giving a beautiful prophecy, or through Hosea, of course, mm -hmm. that Mamlechat Yisrael and Mamlechat <laughs> will actually come back together them and have one, and have only one, um, one head, not split into two kingdoms. So here, I, look at how beautiful. Remember, they call. Remember, the girl was called Lo Ruchama, not Ruchama. The mm -hmm. boy was called Lo Ami, not my nation. Not my, my, right. But what does it say? In look it up, Stuart. Verse three. Imru yeah. Say to your brothers, Ami, my people, not Lo Ami, my nation. Ula mm -hmm. and to yeah. your sisters, yeah. Yeah. Ruchama. Call them Ruchama. I always tell my daughter she has to listen to this Haftorah because her name is in there. And your sisters, okay, they say here lovingly accepted. That could be Rucham. Rachem means to have mercy. I don't know how you pronounce it. Remonstrate? Remon I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. Remonstrate? Remonstrate? Rivu be'im chem rivu. That means to fight, argue with her. She is not my wife. I am not her husband. Let her put away her... So put away her adultery. So... So this is flipping again. So we had three, four, three psukim of comfort. And now God is figuring out what to do with God's, so to speak, adulterous wife, who is us. Why? Because of idolatry. Let's just remember that. We're not talking about this time. It's not about not being kind to other people, which so often happens. This is specifically about idolatry. Mm -hmm. um, if, if we, his wife, God's wife does not, do that i will strip her naked leave her as the day she was born i'll make her like a wilderness so that's interesting this some tiha kamid bar so i i want us to think about i heard i read different ideas about what the connection could be between this story and midbar remember we said it's about midbar that is the haftorah the haftorah is for parashat bar. so this seems very negative I will put her like a desert, like a wilderness. And that's where B'nai Israel were for the next 39 years after they sinned because of actually the Chaita Meraglim, because of the scouts, the the sin of the scouts. So the so this seems like a negative, but it is a connection. Do you agree? First it was the counting. I mean, <laughs> it was a tangential connection because they can't be counted like the stars in the sky or the sands of the sea. Mm. Not exactly like counting mamash numbers but there is a connection but here's another connection i will make her like a desert like a wilderness render her like a desert land i will i will let her die of thirst although that's not what happened to the jewish people the, uh, vivian did you want to say something no okay and let her die of thirst but that's not what happened we were given Be'er miriam we were given the well of water I will disown her children. But I feel like God is putting distance now and saying, that's her, that's that one. But I, God's going to come back and re-accept her. Uh, I'm not going to accept her children. That's, by the way, always terrible to me, never to, to blame the children for the sins of the parents. 
She conceived them as I acted shamelessly because she thought I would go after my lovers who supply my bread and water, my wool and linen, my oil and my drink. But actually, God is the one who really gave her what she needed. That's, I'm skipping a little. I will hedge up her rose with thorns. What does it say here? Hebrew is your. Okay, no, we don't need to go into that. Raise walls against her, she shall not find her. By the way, this reminds me, honestly, of the story of Sleeping Beauty. Do you remember? There was a hedge of thorns for a hundred years. I love that. I love that particular story. She shall not find her path. She'll be like Sleeping Beauty that you can't reach her. Pursue her lovers as she will. She will not overtake them. Seek them as she may. She shall never find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then I fared better than now. And she did not consider this. It was I, God, who bestowed on her the new grain and wine and oil. I who lavished silver on her and gold, which they ended up using for Baal. Assuredly, I will take back my new grain in its time, my new wine in its season. I will take my wool and linen. Mm -hmm. And here it's a beautiful way that covered her nakedness. Can we just talk about that for a moment? It's so beautiful. I'm going to put it in the chat. How beautiful that God uses the same allegory. I'm putting into the chat. I just love mm -hmm. this from a poetic point of view. I put into the chat for those interested. First, God said, you, you, meaning the wife who was, who strayed, who went astray, you said, oh, my wool and my linen and my da 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 da, -da was all from my lovers. And God says, no, it was actually for me. And then God says, I'm going to take it back <coughs> and use it to forgive her. I'll use it to cover her nakedness, which is actually her shame. Any thoughts about that? Or is it just me who finds that fascinating? Which is fine. How beautiful that is. Can we imagine this in real life? I mean, this is, I'm, I'm, I want, I hope we can bring it into a little bit into our lives and see if it, if it mirrors what we might think or what we might feel. Particularly, I want to get to the Midbar at some point. Any thoughts yet? It's okay if not, we'll go back to the... Judy, did you want to say something? No, not yet. Not yet, not yet. Okay, Robert, do you want to say something? We're in the midboard and uh, facing crop, crop failure. <laughs> God <laughs> says, it's, yeah, instead of... Facing uh, what, yeah, failure? what failure? What failure? Crop failure. We're relying upon God for our wool and our linen and our sustenance. And God's you saying you want to... Go, yeah, you can say you want, you want to go after Baal. You want to go trust in Baal. Your, your crops will fail. You won't have what you need. Yeah, yeah. it'll be like a Midbar. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Beautiful. Yes, Ruby. What, what could be barer than to be in the desert? So anything will be like a covering. You know, and, and whether it's our shame or our bodies or our feelings, you know, the, the, the Same I can, think of, I can think of nothing, I can think Please. of nothing more barren than, than being in the desert. Wait, 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 one second. Can we stay for a moment in the desert? Oh. You said our feelings. What did you mean by that? I just meant physically. You know, before we, we have thoughts of God, we are physically in that desert. And being in that desert can itself uh, be so uh, overwhelming. Um, can so it also be a starting point, Ruby, by being, it by can be. It can be. Because we if received I don't, the I Torah and the Midbar. I can't think of anything more of a, of a start than being yes, in yes. this position. Can it be like a reset button? Yeah, I suppose yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. So I, I wanted to see if we can see the Midbar, because God is saying what Robert said, I'm going to make your world like a Midbar in the negative sense, meaning nothing can grow. But maybe in the Midbar, we also can hear that still silent voice of ourselves, like that med meditative state or the place where mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. like that noise that's coming in from the outside, that we can go to a place that's quiet. No other way, distractions. No other distractions. No distractions. See, I think that, I think that was what I found, part of what I found so interesting about this was the thought that Midbar can be both. The Midbar symbolizes, it reminds me a little bit of Matzah. Matzah on Pesach symbolizes slavery and it also symbolizes freedom. How can one thing symbolize both? But it can. And as humans, as human thinking human beings, we can hold both those pieces. We can see both. And the Midbar can be feel like a curse or like a 
punishment in some ways, but it can also be a place of growth. And I think we're going to read that soon in the Haftarah where it can also be a place of growth. So when you said the word feelings, that's where I felt we could start from that spot where we lay bare or we are, we listen, we hear our feelings. And then maybe from there, there can be growth. Judy. Yeah, with, within the word midbar is the same word davar. So from the midbar, we hear the davar Hashem. And lidaber. To speak. Bear, exactly. Right. And thank you. And when there's silence, <clears throat> I feel like that's a good metaphor for our lives. Our lives is, are very noisy, no matter what, no matter how much, if you're working, if you're not yet. I mean, I guess somebody who, who doesn't do anything at all, but even that person can, you know, get on their phone, get on technology, get on TV. Our lives in general today, even more so than it used to be, is crowded and noisy and do we take the time to go to a midbar from a very positive proactive place that can be taking a walk one of my favorite places that martin my husband and i take a walk is walking towards the hudson palisades but then instead of making a right from the 232nd which is also good but instead of that we make a left and we walk, there are places where you can glimpse the Hudson on the way. And that feels mm -hmm. really, even in, even in the summer or the fall, you know, when there's a lot of leaves, not just in the winter. And then we get to this little teeny half moon park. It's the, uh, it's called Half Moon, which at the beginning we thought because it's crescent shape, but it's actually the name of Henry Hudson's ship. And that's why it's called Half Moon. You knew that, I didn't know that. And, and from there we find this huge overgrowth and jungly looking, and then the Hudson is further on. And it's very sparsely attended so it's rarely happened occasionally there's one person there maybe two and that's a really lovely place where we love to just be quiet lean on the railing we don't often speak we just stand and lean over and that's like our favorite spot so it's not a midbar in the sense that there's no growth but it is in the sense of pausing from regular life and i wonder if each of us whether you can walk outside or not even if it's in the winter when you can or when it's very hot or when it's raining can we imagine, can we take one of the things maybe we can take from this haftarah is finding the midbar both from a place of we need to confront things in our lives that are difficult, so strip away, but also to hear that voice of God or to hear our own voice. I, I would like to offer that and I'd like to offer that for the Chag Shavuot, for this longer weekend of Friday Shabbat that we should find the time and place, whether we're visiting family, whether we're alone, whether we're going to shul or not, where can we find that place where we can feel like we're in the midbar and from there a place of growth? And each of us will have a different way of doing that. But that, that's what spoke, one of the things that spoke to me very, very deeply, especially since there's a lot of positivity. So unless somebody has something, I'd like to go back to the- Another, another thought on the- Go, go. Okay, Judy, another Judy. thought. Somebody else? No, you do. Okay, another thought on the word midaber, uh, midbar is also midaber, and we are the people. I, Rabbi Weiss taught this. I didn't make this up. We are midaber, and it distinguishes us from the animals. Yeah, yeah, there's the levels, right, that we right. see. Very nice, beautiful. We can share our thoughts through words. Yep. Okay, back to the Haftarah, the Haftarah. Now I will uncover her shame in the very sight of her lovers. Not one of them shall save her from me. I will end all her rejoicing, but these are the ones for the idols. For festivals, new moons, and Sabbaths. Wait one second. I'm not sure what this is. One second. I will lay waste her vines and fig trees, which she thinks are a fee she received from her lovers. I will turn them into brushwood and the beasts of the field shall devour them. I will punish her thus for the days of Baalim, meaning the idols, on which she brought them offerings decked with earrings and jewels. She would go after her lovers forgetting me. Ah, but now it switches. In this Pasuk 16, now God switches. And God as a spurned and scorned lover is now willing to open the path for reuniting with God's lover, who is us. I will entice her. 
I will coax her, maybe speak lovingly, maybe send a, a heart emoji <laughs> to B'nai Israel. Wouldn't it be nice if we all got a little heart emoji from God before Shavuot? That would be kind of cool. The whole tiha hamidbar. So now God is switching midbar. Remember? Sorry, I'm so excited because I love this Haftorah. First, God said, I'm going to make her like a midbar, the wilderness. Now God is saying, I'm going to take her back to the midbar. And the midbar is where we got the Torah. The dibarti aliba. I will speak to her tenderly, to her heart. I love it. it can I see? Can I say something on what was what we just read? Yeah. On the halach ticha, we have the halacha there. Hashem will be giving the halacha in the midbar. <laughs> nice, beautiful, beautiful. Halacha does mean from the word lalechet, which means Jewish law should change and shape as we move through the times. Yeah, process. Beautiful. Process, yeah. Benata, tahalich is a process. Very good. That is the word in Hebrew, tahalich, from the same word lalechet. Now I will give her her vineyards. By the way, this is where they got the name for the for the city, Petach Tikva, the opening of hope. Then she shall respond, you know, okay. So imagine a couple who fall in love. And let's just say from his point of view, and he speaks tenderly and beautifully to her. And every moment together is so joyous and loving. That is the time of engagement of erasti. And we're going to get to that pasuk, I will be engaged to you, I will betroth you. Because that is the time usually when it's undiluted joy and love. We haven't come to, as somebody told me, rolling up your sleeves and doing the laundry and washing dishes together. But rather, it's a time when you find the joy together, the things that are similar, you discover things. And then as time goes on, real life sets in and it doesn't usually, sometimes it does, but it doesn't usually stay on that high. And now God is saying, but no matter how much she strays, I still love her. And I'm going to bring her back to the way she was. I'm going to speak endearingly to her. I think everybody in a couple relationship, if possible, or, or suggest it to your children, do date night. Find times to connect. And by the way, this can also be with friends. It doesn't even have to be only with lovers. We sometimes want to renew our friendship. I just had, when I was in Israel, I had uh, two or three hours with my best friend who I met in ninth grade in high school. And we both, it's been such a long time because when I go to Israel, I'm so busy and it was COVID for a long time. So I don't often have time with her. And we both said to each other after we spent two or three hours, this felt like old times. It just felt like old times. Both of us had the same feeling. We couldn't even put our finger on what it was. But it felt like old times, and that's also important, how, whatever that means. It felt like old times. And I love that God uses the midbar in both directions. Um, Stuart, you're, there's something making noise. I'm putting you on mute. I love that God does that. <clears throat> and I love that we did that as well in our discussion about how the midbar can be both. And when we strip everything away, that's our place for growth. Uh, Helen, did you want, did somebody want to add something? No. Okay, let's, let's. I want to add something. Yes. I want to, well, I, well, always in the beginning, I got a bit of uh, a chastising the people, a bunch of, in the end, but I'll, read, but I'll, I'll make it better, better for you. Like, you have to wait till the end of the story, you know. I, Is I mean, that a he, question? He, yeah, that's a question. I want to ask you another question. Wait, why what was the question? Ball, ball, uh, I want to ask you, why is Baal Teshuvah is a master of this? What, 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 Baal Teshuvah means a, a, a master of learning or of, 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 of returning, right? That's Baal Teshuvah. Why is Baal the same as Baal the bad Baal? <laughs> Can we continue? Baal comes up. Give me a moment, Stuart, please, okay? It just happens well, it, to be that I don't know why. I think Baal is actually, in the case of the idol, is not a Jewish word, actually. Just happens to be. But, 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 but Baal means master. master of, 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 no, I of, agree of, with you, but I th I think the Baal of the idol is not a Hebrew word. That's what I'm saying. It's not yeah, a but, Hebrew well, I, word. Oh, okay. Okay. Continuing the word Baal, thank you for that lead in. This is my favorite pasuk. And it'll be on that day, Naum Hashem, the word of God. You will call me Ishi. My ish, my man, the same way. Wait, wait, uh, yeah. wait, wait, Stuart, Stuart, Rega. I know what I mean. Hold your horses. 
And the same way that a man calls his wife or his spouse, ishti, my wife. And the normal word in modern day Hebrew is ba'ali. But ba'ali for a woman means my owner, my master. I do not call my husband ba'ali. I always say ishi, my ish, which is comparable to the man calling his wife ishti. That's why I love this pasuk feels so modern because God is saying something that we should all do. The lo tikri'ili od bali. You will not call me any more bali. Now, maybe it's because of what Stuart said. I don't want to be connected to Baal, to that other idol. That's possible. And I never thought of that. I always took it that don't call me your master, but we should be on the same level. A man and wife partners should be able to see each other as equal partners. I just love, 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 love this pasuk. I will take that words of Baalim from her mouth. They will not be mentioned again. Continuing, okay, I'm going to skip that just for a moment. And this pasuk is, by the way, said, um, they're said when people put on tefillin. I don't put on tefillin, but I know people who do say this. I will betroth you forever. I will betroth you with justice and righteousness. And with kindness, and compassion, and with faithfulness, you will know God and be devoted to God. And we know that yadat, ladat, when it says that Adam yadat chava, that Adam knew Eve, it meant physically that they had relations together. So God is in a hidden way telling us in a hint saying that as if we obviously we can't have physical relations with God, but it'll be so close. We will have that spousal relationship with God and we will know God in an intimate, intimate. The word I want to use here is intimacy. Um, the Radak, by the way, says the reason it says three times, I will betroth you, I will betroth you, I will betroth you is from three exiles. Exile of Egypt, exile of um, Babylonia, Babel, and the current exile where we haven't fully returned back. We don't have a third Beit HaMikdash. And we don't have, um, we have sovereignty in our land, but we don't have Mashiach. So that's an interesting point. And Erastich, I will betroth you, goes back to what I said, that that moment of heightened joy is during Erustin, during the time of betrothal, of engagement, even before living together. Yes, Ruby. Can, can we say, yes. therefore, that idols are all masters? They're not <laughs> any way spousal relations. Nice. Stuart, do you like that? Yeah, 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 I, 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 I do you like, wait, do you, message. wait, do you like what Ruby said? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 they're not all, how, they're masters of who? I don't know of, who, of the who people who, of the people who serve them, who worship them. Yeah, I think that's very powerful, very powerful, goes back to what Judith, but we're just bookending the beginning when we spoke mm -hmm. about it. That they, we become slaves mm -hmm. to them, or people become, it's fantastic, yeah. this is awesome, Torah. Just want to tell everybody here, you have written midrashim here that are just gorgeous. <laughs> and I wish I, could. I, I need to write it. Um, I need to write uh, a Torah the on this. Yes, Stuart. What? Wait, wait. Stuart, say it again. Yeah. Masters of evil. That's what they are. Masters of evil. Masters of evil. Yeah. 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 You could say that. Yeah. 100%. What else? Oh, can I say something? I, I want to say something about some important. You know, One second, when, Stuart, when before you, you but Stuart, before you say something. First of all, let's lower our tones. I just want to give a chance to other people to say, if that's okay, because you've had opportunity. So let me just ask other people because we're almost at the end of class. So I would love it if you just gave people a moment to think. And Faye, right. I want to get back to you and see if anything popped up for you. <laughs> She's just, her mind is blissful. Mind blowing. Okay, okay. If, any, if anybody else has something, and if not, um, Stuart, you're welcome to say something. Go ahead, Stuart, go. Uh, uh, Jezebel and Ahab killed all the, all the when I was going to say all the killed all the prophets were in the, in the cave he, he, and only only a large was allowed to live. He, yep. They killed. They tried to kill. So yep. how how good was it? They were so bad. They killed all the good prophets. Yep, yep, yep. Never, yep. Never, never mentioned them, right? I don't know all prophets. the details, but I remember that. Yes, I do remember that. But Elisha, so that's, why, uh, he, that's why Elijah stepped up and he and he and he and he and he. And he 
and, and he, when my mom called him, he, 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 he stopped him. He should have stopped him right then and there. Okay, but wait, out, but right? Stuart, right. Stuart, Stuart, wait, I want to interrupt you. It's not that it's not true what you're saying. I just feel like this is going astray from what we were talking about. I really prefer well, because to Because it's about Bali, Bali, why are you Bali? Stuart, shh. I just want to calm everybody down. I just want to stay with this idea of the mitzvah, of God taking us back. I want to stay with that at the end. That's what I'd like to leave us with. And it's not that it's not true what you're saying. What you're saying is 100% true. I just feel that I want to stay within this tough Torah. Because I have a father. He didn't act like that to me. What? I love my father. Terribly. Of I, course. I, I love my father. Yes, yes, yes. We hear that. Now, I'd like to hear if uh, before we leave for Chag HaShavuot, First of all, I have to say a huge thank you because this was just really beautiful. And I would love to go around and anybody who has some takeaway, something that spoke to them from this class, I would love to hear. I know, Helen, we did that in another class and I really appreciated it. You don't have to, but if there's a short soundbite you would like to share that you're taking away from this, I would love to hear it. Who's gonna be the courageous one to step into the fray? <laughs> There's no right or wrong. Yes, Judith. I had a, a thought that flickered, and I don't know how related it is, but that whole constant shift in, we're talking about the relationship between God and us as, as a marital relation, as an intimate relationship, and the whole constant shift between hate and anger and revenge and love and protection, and it shifts back and forth, and that sort of is how relationships are. It's true. You just gave me goosebumps. I think you're right. I was thinking that I was wondering if you were leading to that, but it's true. Now it's not always so polarized, but guess what? Sometimes but it's, it all it's all there. It's all there. It's true. There's no relationship is particularly spousal relationships that doesn't go through its. And the question is, can we remember to pause and hit reset so we don't stay in the down? And also that when we're in the up to know this is great, but let's just be honest it can't stay like this forever there are going to be downs that has to do with a book called peaks and valleys which i think is an amazing simple simple book the person who wrote who moved my cheese i find i like it more than who moved my cheese even though that became the more popular one. peaks and valleys it's a really simple book but it's an allegory for our lives and how our lives go through ups and downs whether it's our health our friends our, our children our relationships everything our, our you know our wealth, everything goes through ups and downs. And what I took from there is that we're in the down, we can hope and pray and know that in most cases there will be an up. When they're up, we should not be upset, disappointed, completely thrown for a loop that there will be a down. So thank you, Judith, for that. Vivian, you wanted to say something? Unmute. I was thinking of using using a midbar where where there's nothing, it's so empty, it's nothing. And yet from that, you could start with that and then move up and, and, and uh, achieve so much that uh, you never should give up hope, never. That it, you always go forward, always go up a, a little more, a little more, a little more until you achieve what you want what you need to that's do. That's very much that's very much who you are, Vivian, actually. But I want to add to what you're saying. Even though on the surface, the Midbar seems barren, it's not. It mm. isn't. I went to, when I was in Israel, I think it was Mitzpah Ramon, which is the Machtesh, the, tra the crater, not the traitor. Mm. And, and it is like a Midbar, and I've been in a Midbar. And it seems so barren, but actually, especially if you go out at night, Mm. wildlife there are things happening and there's always some i mean it's not usually like those the the movies with the sahara desert i mean maybe i've never been to sahara desert where it's yeah. all dunes and there's no and there's an oasis right every desert mm. has an oasis and most deserts yeah. have shrubs and have things there's always some mm. cactus cacti that are able to be resilient and to weather even if there aren't isn't a lot of moisture so i yeah. I think on one hand, the wilderness seems and it's, you know, very barren empty, but underneath it's actually not. Yeah. And I think that's where it comes from. And I think we did a Haftorah together. I'm sure we did, where we said that even though it looks dead, the branch, remember? But there will be a green shoot that will come out. It seems mm -hmm. like it's sleeping, 
Yeah, yeah, Vivian, did you want to add? Yeah, I have another comment on that. Look what happened to a lot in, in Israel. It was a total desert. No one thought and anyone could thrive there. And it's become an amazing place. Uh, I mean, the Israelis have done that to, yep. to, to a, a totally deserted, uh, nothing area where, where no one believed anything could happen Beautiful. in a lot. And the whole Negev. The whole, I write, the whole, whole Negev. Beautiful. The Negev Desert. Yeah. The Negev Desert, yeah. The Negev, do it with Israel, do it with the Negev. Yeah, exactly. That's what Judy said. You didn't hear her, Stuart. She said exactly. I heard her. I, I, yeah, oh, you heard her. Okay. The I, Negev. I Thank you. Negev. Yeah, we heard. Yep. Great. Milton, do you want to add something? We didn't hear from you enough today. No. <laughs> One second, Milton. Yeah. yeah we, uh, who would have thought that Israel would be a petroleum producer? Who would have thought? Correct. <laughs> uh, and I am sure there is, uh, beyond the agriculture for the places that seemingly are desert, right. uh, we'll wake up in 100 years from now and, and the sands will be valuable. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know, yeah, even from whatever the meat is made of, you're saying. Very nice. Helen. Um, the part that I really liked is at the end where it refers to us referring to Hashem as Ishi instead of Baali in terms of the love, expressing the love relationship. There. Nice, nice. Thank you. Beautiful. Moshe, anything to add? Anything, Moshe? Moshe, do you want to add something, say something, take away something that struck you? No. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's also a comment. No problem. Faye, anything to add? You're muted. My brain is still at the beginning of Hosanna. Okay. <laughs> because the entire nation of Israel paid the price for, for this little detour. But... His, his placing it historically alongside what was actually going on in the country, it's the Levium that started the individual altars rather than making uh -huh. people go to the temple. So they kind of took one step down. It was like a beginning of like a fall. It was easier to move from an independent altar um, where wherever the particular Levy lived to the Baal who's right next door was in their face all the time. Mm -hmm. It was, they shifted the focus from directly to the temple mm -hmm. to alternatives by having their own individual altars at that point. So that's been rotating around in my head the entire session. <laughs> okay. And Thank I can't you. get rid of it, you know, it's just. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Lance, say hi. Great background. Hello. <laughs> hi. Anything to add? I've just been listening and um, enjoying Great. everything that you've been saying. And it's, um, it's pleasant to hear that um, you can have two perspectives on the same thing. Nice, nice. And um, in a certain sense, I, the only thing I would like to add is one perspective on the Midbar is magic. That um, the world in the desert is filled with... Um, Mana and um, Sinai and um, clouds uh, and traveling well, talking donkeys and things like that. <laughs> Love it. And um, it's it's really a great pleasure to think about these things in terms of ambiguities rather than in terms of binary. Ooh, nice. Ooh, we'll have to talk about that sometime. Thank you for leaving me with that. Fantastic for leaving us with that. Thank you, Lance. You Robert, anything to say? I like the comparison you mentioned before about uh, God does not, want, does not want to be referred to as a Baal anymore. Nice, nice. Uh, Judy. Mm -hmm. I think I to about, oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, Robert. Yeah. I to add about, I was also in uh, Ms. Pa Ramon in 1970. Ms. Pa Ramon in 19, 1970. It was really nothing there. There's about a few dozen um, houses. And, you know, when you were there, I'm sure there was a, 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 a border it was fence. An observatory, there were, there were hotels, there was much more, right? It's a much more settled area now. 
wall along the edge. They couldn't fall over. And that wasn't there when I was there in 1970. There was nothing. We went on a, a two-day teal down and across. Wow. And it was it was amazing. Fantastic. And yeah, there was life there. The little shrubs and little things. You, you stood and looked one place and looked and wow. it was life. It was amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm imagining it because I remember being there. Thank you. Judy Stiglitz, you have something to say? Uh, I, I said, okay. I just talked to you. Said, yeah, that's fine. Ruby, something to add before we go? No? Thank you. Susan, Sue Rudnick, I'm just saying hi. I see you're not in the picture, but did everybody get a chance? Stuart, Lance, everybody. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you for. Oh, Sue, did you want to add you. something? Wait, Susan, did you want to add before we go or nothing? Okay. This was amazing. I loved this class. I want to thank everybody. Hak Sameach. Hak Sameach. We have a few more classes before we finish for the year. And people can start thinking if you, I have some ideas, but if people think of requests for next year, we can't do all the requests, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to continue with Torah because it'll be mostly repetitive anyway. Yeah. But um, I would love, uh, you know, we've done a Gadita, which is stories we've done Kohelet and Ruth and Esther is an option. You know, there are many mm -hmm. options. And also my, one of the things yeah, that I, you like that idea. One of the things that I love doing is relationships in the Torah. And that's something, or in the Tanakh. And I, as opposed to personalities, which is also cool. I love that too. I wonder, another one is magic, which is funny you said that, Lance. Magical yeah. moments in the Torah to me seem, there's so many of them and we would zoom in and learn them. So I love text. So I'm thinking of going back to Torah text. That's, is this our last class then for the uh no 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 no. we have more i'm just throwing out ideas no no we're gonna oh, have okay next week. Go ahead. in june we won't have every week but uh okay. you know you know what i think we only uh, have can i say can i have one more thing i have one more thing one second Stuart. we might only have two more classes ruby that's why i'm planting seeds okay yes Stuart. Well, the reason i like you when i first met you because i used to go to the <laughs> Uh, think of my room services, and before, you were teaching those young girls, and you were always very, uh, very, very kind to them, and you were very. Stop the recording. Very...